Hello and welcome, my demon bearing leaks. Last time we have seen Phoenix go down the drain. No, rather. Uh, rather. So, what will Daiji do now? And might we see some new powers? Well, let's put on our belts and let's go! Episode 35 Humanity stands at a crossroad. To each their own resolve. Tamaki was Tama kidnapped by Vale. And Hana actually feels bad for that, so she at least cares a little. Good thing we have several riders who can help get him back. But apparently, this was all planned by Weekend, and it seems Tamaki gets a belt of his own. Interesting. Former nerd turned evil sombrero guy turned nerd again might get superpowers. Um, Tamaki was tied up with what seems like spider's web. And spiders produce that web out of their... Veil? That is disgusting. Even for a demon. Well, while the battle with Veil is going on, Akami joins in as well, which might be a bit problematic, as they don't know how to free her yet. Yes, they did. Like Edison inventing the light bulb that actually works, sacrifice... Um, or Einstein coming up with mathematical stuff that got us so far nowadays, he sacrificed... his time, I guess? Oh, he got through to Akami by kicking her. With lightning. And she gives a hint on how to defeat Gif, which is basically fighting fire with fire. Well, good thing we have three siblings who have the right cells. And now it's time. Tamaki will henshin. Or not, because Vale took the buffalo stamp. Whoopsie. But Hana still has her stamp. And took the driver now. So she will be the one. Wait, wrong opening. I do not really like the name Kamen Rider Aguilera. It is a name she had laid to rest to bury her past. Okay, you can also argue she accepts it as part of her, but still, there could have been a more fitting way. Design-wise, yeah, I love it. This is even better looking than Jan. This could be my favorite rider design in general. Awesome. Well, this line explains the name, but I still don't really feel it. In the end, it was all a test apparently, and it was always her that should transform, not poor Tamaki. I hope he gets the chance as well. And she really kicks bulbous body parts on the backside of a human. So much so, that Vale has to flee, albeit he is not yet defeated. Good, because that should be done by the siblings. It's their father's demon after all. Meanwhile, Daiji gets almost killed by this thing. Ouch. This episode was pretty nice. A lot of fighting in it. But that's what we are here for, right? Episode 37. Inevitable Clash. The Do or Die Demon Recapture Mission. Daiji got a nice beating. So he just gives up and does whatever Akaishi says. That is lame. And so damn stupid. Especially as they have found something they can do against Gif. And he says for the sake of peace. Yeah. If you kill everyone that complains, that might turn into peace. But at the cost of feelings and freedom. I'd rather have a not so peaceful society than one where I can't think for my own. And he calls it half-assed that they might have found a way to defeat Gif. But it is not half-assed to talk about justice while catering to the one who is simply stronger than you and can beat you up. Oh, small Karizaki giving his dead father a stone is so cute. While being so sad as well. So, the plan is to catch Akami and extract gift cells from her. Um, you have at least three people carrying those cells, so 
why am I even asking? I mean, the plan is for him as Barret Rex to freeze her, so obviously he will fight against Akemi, not against the other demon. Oh, Karizaki gets his own hashtag. That is how Vice shows appreciation. But just as they had Akemi, that other demon distracted them and Akaishi finishes her off. So no cells from her. Like I said, Iki, Sakura and their father. Three people with cells. And stupid little Daiji puts his siblings at fault for her death. Not Akaishi. But well, Akaishi is stronger than him, so how can it be his fault, right? Oh, and then Hiromu comes back. Daiji loses more and more sympathy. It's like his brain cells revert back to nothingness. Well, let's just hope he catches himself again. Episode 38. A father and son weaves. The ultimate revise. You complain that every civilization on Earth blamed Gif as the devil. You know... Maybe it would help not killing everyone! Meanwhile, Daddy wants the Karizakis to extract Gif's cells from him to create a power that can destroy Gif. But the operation is life-threatening. So why not take some of the cells inside Sakura and Iki as well? Are you stupid? His chances of survival are 50-50? That is not that bad. Could be way worse. Imagine it being a shiny Pokemon. However, little Karizaki isn't a fan of this, so Iki has to persuade him. But a lot of talking about father's and son's bond is able to do that, so the operation is on. Again, you could use cells from... You know what, you won't get it anyway, so I'll shut up. Papa Karizaki sure looks trustworthy with that mask. I know there's a reason for him wearing it, but this picture is just funny. And then, all riders minus holy light fight off the demons while the operation is going on. I like battles like this, where the team joins, even with one missing. And there, Hiromi said the words, trying to get Daiji back to his senses. He just foreshadows that they will need to battle him. And this will definitely happen, I know these shows by now. And thanks to a little keepsake stone from a certain grave, father and son now work together to maybe kill a man. Well, of course they are trying not to, but it is kind of strange. Vale isn't very fond of the operation as well, because Genta's death would be his death as well. So even if Genta dies, there are two positive outcomes of it, the new stamp and Vale's death. But even then, let's hope he survives. And thus, Iki realizes he is not fine with it after all and rushes into the operation room, grabbing the unfinished stamp, thus cancelling the operation. But well, this is a tokusatsu show, so either they can do it without that special stamp, or... Ah yes, for the stamp to work, it needs to be split into two, so with that and the episode's title, I'm sure it will still work. And together with Vice, they just rip it apart, which is kinda awesome. I would have thought they cut it, but like this? Nice Vice. And Vice even got his own belt now, and both of them do the stamping. That is so awesome, and the perfect thing for this show's ultimate form. Which looks really cool for both of them. I love the pink and blue clashing with each other, highlighted by the silvery parts. And their helmets looking similar but still different is really perfect. This is a great final form. And they can create Kagebunshin. They easily defeat the Gift Juniors and seem really powerful. Maybe too powerful? Makes it look like a warrior's game. Wait, back in an earlier episode, the Koei Tecmo building was seen. They even managed to defeat that demon that always heals itself. That is a huge victory. But we are close to the end here. 
after all. This episode was actually pretty cool. It had a lot of feelings in it and some nice battling as well as a new form, which looks cool. I really enjoyed it. Episode 39, Hope and Despair, a sibling conflict. Iki's amnesia gets worse as he has forgotten the onsen trip they made after his mother came out of the hospital. I wonder if in the end he will forget everything and just be a rider. Or if they find a way to remedy this. I kinda like this idea. Daiji lost his demon, Veil his partner. If Daiji really goes down the path of evil, I wanna see those two join. They could be like a dark revise thingy. But with only about 9 episodes left, I doubt something big will happen. So, he basically says they brainwash the masses with video footage cut in a way to make them look very bad. Akaishi is basically traditional television. Oh, that mother character still exists. Thought they have forgotten about her. Oh well, there she goes, she dead. I feel for Hikaru, but how could you really care about this as a viewer if she was rarely shown? And when she was shown, she mostly was just standing around. You could? Yes, he ordered you to retreat, but she was killed before you did that. At the time she was killed, you were in battle with one of those healing demons. It wouldn't have changed anything. I completely agree to that. However, they might have played family, but really only on the outside. When people weren't watching, they didn't really talk. So how could there be bonds like this? Oh look, my guest role in the show. Karizaki gives Hiromi two demon drivers. Of course, Hiromi himself can't use one anymore. But we have Tamaki and... Um, who goes the second one to? Interesting. And Daiji sets off to Weekend's shelter to get the refugees there. But uh, the people there don't buy into his idiocy. So, as he is the one in the right, he wants to force them. Because you know, that is justice and they can have their freedom that way. So the battle breaks out, siblings plus Aguilera and over demons. Which is really awesome battle. And when Holy Life tries to fire his finisher, Vice deflects it. 